the buffer? Standing on? Can you stand on the buffer? Mm -hmm. On the sidewalk? Yep. With the permit? Nope. Unless you count the First Amendment. Do you count the First Amendment? No problem. My name is Adam Koka. I stand up for people who are looking for ways to empower themselves and maybe just don't know how yet. You mind shutting the camera, please? Why is that? So that you're just not filming me. That's all I'm talking about. It's my right to, sir. Do you mind rolling down the window, please? Well, that's as much as I felt like rolling it down, sir. I fight for freedom. I fight for individual human rights. I fight for the empowerment of everyone who wants to live a better life. People are suffering because of government in all kinds of ways. I mean, from the IRS to the NSA to no-knock raids to the court system. It's, I mean, it's everywhere. Anybody can be a victim of the police state at any time. This is at the University of California at Davis. Some of the protesters sitting on the ground but then being pepper sprayed by a police officer. We strive to empower everyone who wants to stand up for themselves by educating them about how to deal with the police, how to interact with government in general. I want you to pull up secondary, sir. No thanks. Correct me if I'm wrong, did I assemble into Mexico or is it still United States? Okay, well then therefore I should have the freedom to travel unmolested. Okay, see you later. Based on my experience as an activist, I feel like I'm in a really good position to encourage other activists. Mr. President, the longer the hypocrisy continues, the more people realize that your government is a racket, that it is a sham. Over my career, I've been arrested about three dozen times. No victim, no crime, no victim. Been roughed up by the police about half a dozen times. Sir, this is your last warning. Did four months in jail, two months in solitary confinement. Since July 9th, 31-year-old Adam Kokish has been incarcerated in a cell in the Fairfax County Jail, which measures seven by seven and a half feet. When they raided my home, they sent more men after me than bin Laden. Officials are here to serve a search warrant at the home of Adam Kokish, a political activist. The government likes to exercise control and keep people afraid and beaten down. So not only does it depend on the enforcement of criminalizing normal behavior. I'll give you your warnings. If you come out here and you demonstrate by dancing, you will be placed under arrest. But they also want to keep us cowering before authority. When we go get arrested, the point is not to get arrested. The point is to reveal the nature of government or to show people where the line is and how you can stand up to authority. You are not arresting us for standing For what? Here. Why are you giving me a warning? As a United States Marine, I did a combat tour in Fallujah in 2004 when things were really nasty there. Sergeant, are you having fun? Well, it's not like going to the beach fun or making out with your sister fun. It's more like shoving shards of broken glass up your ass and taking a bath in Tabasco sauce fun. From the horrors that I experienced and seeing how government can really bring out the worst in people, I've taken as my mission now, not just for myself to live a different way, but to do the opposite and try to bring out the best in people. And that's why I'm running for president in 2020 on the platform of a peaceful, orderly dissolution of the United States federal government. Hey, Dad, how's it going? Hey, pretty good, dude. What you doing? Well, I was just calling to get an update on the ammo company. It's really exciting to see that my dad is starting a family ammo business, Watchdog Ammo, with my younger brothers. You know, one of my biggest fears about a family business uh, is whether or not your brothers would really take the job seriously. And I have to say, I've been impressed. One of the things that I'm worried about is if this really takes off, we're going to need some more help. You want to come work? Yeah, when you can get my felony expunged, we'll talk. Okay. <laughs> I got arrested because I loaded a shotgun in civil disobedience at Freedom Plaza last Independence Day. We are the final American Revolution. Jeffrey is my right-hand man, my best friend, and when I was in jail, he saved my ass when the people working for me were trying to sabotage my operation, and if it wasn't for him, I wouldn't be here today. We're roommates here in the house, and I help Adam pull off his activism. I kind of bring him lots of broken ideas, and he polishes them off and delivers them in the way he does. I'm gonna keep feet at two o'clock. A lot of people feel alone when they get victimized by the government in some way. So people email Adam because he has a perspective on things that uh, fulfill a lot of people's needs. Hey Jeffrey, did you see this email from Pastor Anderson? Uh, not yet. 
Check this out. Hey Adam, my name is Steven Anderson and I live in Arizona where I've had horrible experiences with checkpoints. In April 2009, I was beaten and tasered by the US Border Patrol for refusing a warrantless search of my vehicle. I wasn't carrying anything illegal but was standing up for the principle of the Fourth Amendment. I was then arrested but was later declared not guilty on all charges in a full jury trial. Dude, I gotta see this footage. Well, let me ask this, are you placing me under arrest? You are under arrest. And You're what what right crime now. what crime am I being charged with? Hey, what are you placing me under arrest for? Prefer to obey me right now. As a that, so I have to charge. obey you. This is where things are about to get ugly, yeah, and this is yeah. where it's like it doesn't matter what you say, dude. You're gonna get screwed if they want to screw with you. Oh, he tased him. Just through the hole in the window. That's scary. Standing up to checkpoints is no joke. You are up against the full muscle of the United States law enforcement. Well, hey, Jeffrey, we got a Skype name. Should we call him up? Yeah. All right, let's call. do it. Hey, Pastor Anderson, are you there? Hey, how you doing, Adam? Hey, thanks so much for joining us. We got your email. It's just a crazy story. How do you keep going after something like that? I've been going through these things for years, and for the first few hundred times, I just went along with it. But finally, I started to think about it and say, wait a minute, you know, this is an infringement of my rights. So I basically just stopped answering their questions. And on that one eventful night, they ended up bashing my windows in, tasering me, arresting me, and everything else. You must have known that something like this was a possibility, right? I knew I was taking a risk, but to me, it was worth it. Hey, thank you so much for your time. Appreciate it, thanks. Thanks, brother. Bye. So it's Saturday night in LA. There are gonna be some checkpoints, right? Definitely. So what are the actual legal lines that you cross or don't? If you're driving and you're asked by any police officer for proof of insurance and your ID, that's something you have to give to them. Beyond giving them your paperwork, you should only, you know, say three statements in that, and that's, am I free to go? Um, am I being detained? And no, sir, I don't answer questions. And these checkpoints have nothing to do with their stated purpose. Like the vast majority of tickets at drunk driving checkpoints are for fix it tickets and registration bullshit. And they're harassing hundreds of thousands of people for no good reason. Let's go have some fun with this. So we're here at this checkpoint in Glendale, but at least we can do something about it, raise awareness and tell people that they can miss the checkpoint altogether if they want. Three blocks straight ahead, you can turn here and avoid it. Turn right. It's three blocks straight ahead. If you turn up here, you can avoid it. Everything that we expect to see at a typical checkpoint, we see here. People are being asked for their papers, they're being harassed for no good reason. And it's really an absurd violation of individual freedoms to just say, no, you can't pass unless you show us your papers. So we're gonna drive through this checkpoint and see exactly what's going on here. That's your driver's license, please? Yes, sir. Had any alcoholic beverages to drink tonight? Am I legally obligated to answer that question? Nah, probably not. Where are you headed? Am I legally obligated to answer that question, nice sir? Hey, look, dude, I'm not, I'm not looking for a fight. Help me understand where you guys are coming from. All right, well, a checkpoint like this is an example of the restriction of freedom of movement. If you have freedom to travel, it's not a privilege, that's a right. And for someone to say, well, you have to have your papers or you have to have this, you know, just to be on the road, we believe that that's an infringement of simple freedom of movement and the right to travel. I can understand where you're coming from on that. You guys drive safely and have a safe weekend, okay? Have a nice evening, officer. Thank you. Everyone wants to be free, but they often don't see how their freedom is being threatened by government. In a way, activists are superheroes when they stand up to the evil forces of government and protect the public from being victimized. That's what we're doing. And I can only hope that we inspire more people to do this because the world needs more heroes right now.